end of the Saudi Spine Society for the invitation and uh, allowing NAS to participate. Uh, so again, this is to talk about the role of societies in professional development. Um, and it, there is obviously overlap, and uh, given that I'm a member of NAS, a lot of the things that Eric just talked about and myself uh, have gone through. And again, he mentioned that NAS is a, a global a society and our mission statement. And it uh, was fascinating to me uh, to understand a little bit about the Saudi Spine Society uh, and, and quite the similarities between the two. So again, a multidisciplinary scientific association that aims to promote excellence in spine care in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And those are lofty goals. Um, and interestingly though, having five core uh, components to that in terms of leadership, excellence, professionalism, transparency, and as uh, Dr. Jeff Wong mentioned uh, last night, especially at the gala, the people. That's really what is important uh, with an organization like this. So what is professional development? Uh, it's defined really as the process of improving or increasing the capabilities uh, of staff or, or uh, members within an organization, uh, typically through access to education and training opportunities. And that access to education and training opportunities can be in the workplace or outside of the organization. It may just be by watching other uh, people. And the business dictionary also uh, states that the goals of professional development is to build morale and maintain quality. Uh, and so for any organization and any professional, uh, that's one of the things that we want to do is to help maintain our quality of care and the services that we provide. There are a lot of different topics that come up when anybody ever talks about professional development. Uh, but typical topics, no matter what you're uh, talking about in terms of development, uh, are education, training, mentoring and teaching others, uh, obtaining certification of skills uh, so that you can say that you have a, a certification to be able to do something uh, new in certification, and skills development, so skills you may already have that you can further develop. Uh, sometimes that means learning new techniques. A lot of professional develop means, development means working with others. Uh, there are professional learning communities, and so that's uh, one of the aspects of professional development and, and the role of medical societies to develop communities, uh, both local communities uh, and international communities. Uh, research and general support. So those are typical topics that cover everything for professional development. NAS and spiny, spinal, uh, Saudi Spine Society really address all these as well in terms of education, research, collaboration, and networking, advocacy, and policy. And again, those are the main uh, aspects both in NAS and uh, Saudi Spine Society. And I'm going to focus specifically uh, on these in red and collaboration, advocacy, and policy as well. So I want to go back and uh, talk about one person, this is me, my one, one story. Anybody guess which one I am? No? All right, that's me over there. Long time ago. And a long time ago also, I attended my first meeting for the North American Spine Society. It was in 1999, and it was in Chicago, where I was living and working. And I really wasn't um, planning on going, uh, but I was nudged a little bit, prodded on by two of my mentors, who subsequently were presidents of the North American Spine Society, Joel Press and Heidi Prather. And I was lucky enough to be involved in a research uh, study uh, that was accepted for a presentation at the North American Spine Society. And so I was able to give that in 1999. That really then led to me, in terms of professional development, being involved in educational aspects of the uh, Spine Society, and initially in membership. Later on, I was involved uh, not just being a member, but being involved with the Society on the membership committee. But there's lots of options. There are way too many options and opportunities for education, so it's really difficult to, uh, to know when you're, when you're a young physician and learning about professional development what to do and what options to go after. I recommend a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary societies, and again, I commend you on your society uh, for, for doing that. It really helps in terms of professional development and overall education. I also think the spine-specific, if your practice is spine and the majority of your practice is spine, having spine-specific educational opportunities is very important, and evidence-based care. Going to a course, learning a procedure, doing something that is not evidence-based care is, is less likely to provide an overall benefit in terms of professional development. 
And again, I think the, the First Saudi Spine Society Annual Conference has covered all these bases in promoting excellence in spine care. In research, uh, one of the roles of the societies in professional development and then uh, ultimately an individual's uh, professional development is identifying priorities. The, uh, the society can provide resources and funding. Again, Eric talked about how NAS uh, can uh, provide clinical guidelines, and I know you've talked about that within your society. Uh, AUCs are appropriate use criteria statements. There's other recommendation statements, evidence-based medical training, and then publications, and NAS is involved in those with the Spine Journal and Spine Line, and patient education uh, materials. Again, those could be print materials or other uh, things, uh, such as I was uh, I somehow ended up on YouTube uh, through a NAS uh, 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 video presentation that I was given. So collaboration, um, uh, again, um, medical societies like the North American Spine Society and Saudi Spine Society are very important because they're multidisciplinary. Again, I can't stress that how I feel that that's a very important part of professional development and important for, for medical communities in general. Um, but they're also multi-society and when we work together as different societies and come together and share ideas and collaborate, I think that's very important in terms of professional development and the networking aspects. Advocacy is another aspect of professional development. Again, that's very important. And we advocate uh, every day. Every patient that we see, we're, we should be an advocate for those patients. So sometimes it's advocating individually for patients, and sometimes it's advocating more collectively for the general population of patients. But I do think that the uh, role of medical societies in professional development is very strong in terms of the importance of patient advocacy. In the United States, we do this, as Eric mentioned, through coverage policy statements to, to obtain coverage. But again, I think that's something uh, that the Saudi Spine Society is looking at as well to, uh, to talk about coverage aspects, <clears throat> aspects of care, uh, access to care, individual access to care, and how do we provide care for a wide geographical area. <clears throat> Where I live in Colorado, um, a lot of our system uh, is very geographically based, further spread out than some of the, the, some of the more um, uh, very tightly clustered population centers. Again, we develop appropriate use criteria, both for our own uh, population, but also to help educate others because we want to make sure that what patients get is really appropriate for their care so that they're not out there um, <clears throat> in what we call left field, getting something that's very uh, obscure and may not be appropriate. Along those same lines, also we are involved with patient safety warnings, and so professional development can help us, again, circling back to advocating for patients and developing patient safety warnings. And then finally, government relations. This is always tricky, and different societies have different roles in terms of their appropriate government relations. But I would say it probably doesn't really matter whether you're dealing with the United States or Saudi Arabia. The importance of government relations is having the experts work with the policymakers. Of course, there has to be collaboration, and, um, and commonly uh, there needs to be um, uh, compromise between experts and policymakers. Um, and understanding uh, as the medical expert what the limitations may be based on the government and policymakers. But it's important to understand the role of, of both, uh, both groups really working together. <clears throat> so again, in terms of policy, uh, working with the government, helping to de make determinations on appropriate care, and in terms of insurance coverage and what we deal with in the United States, uh, commonly has to do with coverage determinations and developing policy statements as well. We work again with multi-societies, and so being involved in a multi-society work group to help uh, uh, develop coverage determinations, working in advocacy and public action, as, as Eric mentioned, uh, in Capitol Hill, but also helping policy uh, with uh, organizations like the Patient Center Outcomes Research Institute. So in terms of my own personal uh, story, uh, the professional development that I was able to obtain through working with the society and being involved with the North American Spine Society really covered all the key aspects of what a society is, uh, is designed to do. And again, through the NAS mission statement, talking about education, research, the aspects of collaboration and networking, advocacy, and policy determination. Ultimately, what it did, it allowed me to be better. It allowed me to be a better physician, a better educator or teacher, 
a better role model for, um, for medical students and residents, a better administrator uh, in helping to understand the other physicians that I work with, and a better person. Uh, and that's really the role of professional development and the role of medical societies in, term, in professional development. <clears throat> professional development, unfortunately, for, for those of us that are super busy, though, is a participation sport. So you have to be active. You can't, professional development will not happen passively. And it was interesting uh, because Jeff uh, Wong last night did talk about how there's so many things that he's been thinking about that we all did. And, and we sort of became involved in things very, um, maybe organically and luckily, somebody asked us to do something, but we started talking about how maybe identifying specific aspects of professional development uh, that can help people and, and really identifying point people for those things. But it is absolutely a participation uh, sport. A lot of uh, professional development, especially in multi multiple uh, multidisciplinary societies does require compromise and understanding um, and willingness to listen um, for the non-surgeons, I always like going to meetings uh, that are multidisciplinary meetings and going to the surgical sessions um, because I tend to learn more. And I hope the surgeons like to come to our sessions in, uh, and learn the non-operative uh, non treatments. Uh, but compromise is important. <clears throat> I think one of the things uh, that, that I wanted to talk about too in terms of professional development is the importance of institutional memory. Um, societies that develop and, and and um, undergo rapid change over and over and over again. Um, it's good because you have new leaders and new thoughts, but difficult sometimes. You don't want to turn over too quickly and lose the institutional memory. One has to understand the history of where they have come from, uh, of where they're going to, understand history, because those, uh, uh, those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it and repeat some of the mistakes. It's important for continuity. Um, so having some, again, some institutional memory and continuity of ideas and, and follow through. Um, overall, I think that the Saudi Spine Society uh, needs to be congratulated. Uh, uh, I wish you continued success. I think that this first annual spine, uh, Saudi Spine Society meeting was a tremendous success. Um, I think you should be proud. I hope that your ministry uh, accepts your recommendations and your proposals for moving forward. Uh, I think you are well on the, on the path of being a very important uh, society, uh, not just in Saudi Arabia, but worldwide. Thank you very much, Dr. Sullivan, for a great uh, presentation. Now, going from global to national, I think this question all of us are asking ourselves every day, uh, what's the new model of care? Uh, it's great to have this next presentation, the new model of healthcare in Saudi Arabia, Vision 2030, will be.